Welcome back to Retail Therapy on the Sunday Scaries podcast feed. My name's Will DeFreeze in the studio with me today. It's my loyal co-host, Barrett Dudley. Barrett, how's it going? It's going all right, you know. It's just been a been a classic Tuesday for me. Spent this morning trying to trying to buy um expensive Crocs. <laughs> Missed on those naturally. <laughs> so then I was contemplating buying my third pair of, of a pair of uh, Merrill Hydromox and in what we call a rage cop, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> uh, managed to stave off that. Um, and you know, now, now I'm here recording a podcast and just listening to my computer hum like a, like a thousand computers because I'm a tab boy and everybody knows that about me. It sounds like your, your, your laptop is trying to get cleared for takeoff <laughs> right now. It's, it's quite loud, but I think we can get through it. There's just, you know, there it, it, just so many tabs, so many things just queued up in shopping carts, so many articles about aesthetics <laughs> and and trends and culture and cruises and there's just you know, there, it, I I got to have it all open all in front of me. What what uh Crocs did you miss on this morning? The 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 latest release of the Salehi Bemberry Pollux. Oh, okay. Uh, Crocs. Okay. Yeah. The, all of his stuff seems so competitive to me that I don't even dream of it. Like yeah. I, I don't even make an attempt. I think it's all really cool stuff. I think it's, it all is like so unique and I would love to have a couple things from him, but I just don't see myself ever making it happen. Yeah. He, he actually, he popped on the complex sneakers podcast very recently and was like very transparent about how he is using a scarcity model to like build up the hype for himself. Good for him. So you good know, for him. Yeah. Yeah. Like no, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's bot city in there. And, um, it is what it is, you know, but it's it's always fun. It's always fun to just try, put yourself in a queue, get a little, you know, 12 minute queue action, mm-hmm, just mm-hmm. enough to like m- think maybe you'll sneak in, just like slide right under like Indiana Jones. And then you get to like one minute and then it says sold out and you spent, you know, you wasted 15, 20, 30 minutes of your life and it's on to the next one. Is his apparel stuff as competitive as his actual? No, no. Okay. You, you could have had any piece of, of the apparel from beasponge.com that you wanted today. Yeah. Okay. Well, shit. Yeah. Maybe I yeah. need to hop on again. Nah, it, it's no. it's it's like, you know how Travis Scott, you know how when he puts out a pair of shoes, they do it on TravisScott.com. Yeah. And there's there's always like 10 or 12 items that you can buy mm-hmm. along with that stuff. It's just, it's it, it's there for exactly that reason. You, just mi- you miss add-ons. on the shoes and you're like, well. He had some hats I, I on the, like it's one been, of the first drops. I guess drops like it's been I, 180 on a hoodie. Like, I, I, you know what I mean? Like, it's just. I don't need technical gear for the outdoors right now. That's designer. Like that just seems right. pointless for me. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's just there to, um, to catch the runoff basically. So no imminent cops are currently happening. Well, no, not today, but I did imminently cop or it, it now a recent cop was, was, was on our wish list last week. I went that day. I went straight to Buck Mason. I tried on the shorts. I bought shorts. Shops to Simple, who reached out and gave me a code for the yeah, pants, yeah. and now Barrett and I might both be Simple Pants Boys soon. So yeah, we'll, you, we'll find out. I, have you ever? Can I let me let me ask you this? Mm-hmm. Have you ever thought about? You know, we talk like Buck Mason. There's one down the street. Have you ever thought about just like walking in and being like, "Hey, I host a really successful podcast. I have over ten thousand followers on Instagram. When I talk about something, people buy it. How about you give me these shorts?" No, no, I'm too coy. <laughs> I'm too coy. Like, like there are situations where like I could probably pull that card and and we like we could probably make that happen at some point. But like I'm so coy about literally everything that I'm just like, no, like, I mean, look, the Sunday Scares Instagram alone, like I should be posting links for people all the time. Like I don't do anything. Yeah. It's partially laziness, partially just like, I don't want people to think I'm just an absolute shill, I, I, which I, I can't just, be. I, I just feel like I feel like, you know, we get rejected from like reward style and like to know it. They're, 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 we're, we're a cash cow, baby. Yeah, we are. We are. That's the thing. Like people just don't realize it yet. But like, I mean, we're moving markets right now. There's a reason that a lot of the items on the wish list have dead links right now. And I think it's because we're just, everyone's just buying everything. I think we're just pushing a million units a week. So, you know, if you're looking for anything we talk about on this podcast, I do my best to uh, list out some of the items, some of the articles, everything on willdefreeze.substack.com. Uh, We do a little listener companion for that on every episode. You can also watch every episode on YouTube at youtube.com slash washed media. Drop a comment there. There's not that many places you can comment on podcasts these days. And I get really excited when I see that we have any comments on any of the YouTube videos. And I think uh, our next episode, which will be episode 12, I think it's going to be a listener questions episode. So if you have a listener question, it's time. Please DM the Sunday Scaries account. Uh, we'll probably put up a prompt at some point for that, or we'll just do a thread somewhere to get questions. But keep an eye out for that. And I'm going to do my best to get a very special guest for that episode who I have not yet reached out to. So maybe I shouldn't tease that yet. But, you know, I, 
I don't care. I'm just I'm just going to do that. At some point in time, it will happen. So, you know, te tease it all you want. Barrett, let's talk about something that I've talked about, a brand that I've talked about numerous times on the Sunday Scaries podcast, a okay. thing that I've talked about uh, just numerous times in life. It's a brand that I'm fascinated by for all the wrong reasons. Uh, they have a show on Netflix that I've watched every episode of, as painful as it was. Uh, I've bought their candles that apparently smell like anything from things I don't want to say. So well, let's talk about Goop real quick. Are you familiar with Goop? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not a Sunday Scaries podcast unless we talk either Goop, ALD, and, and I think we're going to probably mention both of those today. What, what's it's the LadCore today, we, I too. Got, I, and plus LadCore. I mean, are we hitting the, I'm not sure what the trifecta is, but we're definitely, we're, we're getting close on, we're on, this, there. on this week's episode. Well, Goop is officially doing something that is what I will say might be the most off-brand thing that Goop has ever done. Uh, yeah, okay. They are doing yeah. a celebrity cruise. Yeah. Uh, Kid Rock has done a celebrity cruise before, and now uh, I think Gwyneth Paltrow was like, you know what, I gotta get my I gotta get my hat in the ring for this. I'm actually gonna do a celebrity cruise, and so uh, they say that they're taking well-being to the next level with Goop. This is celebrity X cruises, something I'm not familiar with. But it says, prepare for the ultimate getaway. Guests of the retreat will have an opportunity to experience Goop at Sea, an exclusive wellness journey curated by Goop. Goop's founders and CEO, Gwyneth Paltrow, and some of Goop's favorite practitioners will host interactive sessions to enhance your mind, body, and soul. Plus, you receive a variety of wellness-focused perks and surprises throughout your cruise. Space is limited. Somehow, it is $750 per guest which seems like that's how much like one of the classes should cost. So, on the okay. So you sent me this and I immediately started diving in. First of all, I think, I feel like I just have to look, I, I think cruises sound absolutely awful. That that's just like, it, it is something that I will never, ever, ever do. And I understand that people like them, but it's, it's a hard no for me. The, here's the one cruise that I would like to do. The Antarctica one. I, yes, that's it. I can agree with that. I have, I have been on one cruise in my life. It was for an ad deal with our, our my good friend Dylan, who we shared a room with. And like, if you're going to spend money to go on vacation, going on a cruise, you're just you're in a cramped room. The issue is that like when you're on the water, you want to be swimming. Pools on cruise ships are absolutely tiny. And I have to imagine that like the spas that they have on cruise ships aren't the spas that like Goop is trying to actually like market to people. Uh, yeah, I don't know. And I'm trying like I'm, you know, and this is this is the way that I felt prior to to the pandemic as well. So and now they just feel like Petri dishes. But even even before COVID it was not something that interests me. My biggest thing is like it, the, the reason that I never went to summer camp as a kid is because I did not like people controlling my day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so like um, th th this cruise on celebritycruises.com that's going to take you through the French Riviera, the stops all sound good. But then you like get down to like looking at the docking times and it's like 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. So yeah. you're going to like stop in Nice and have less than 12 hours to like get off and do your little exploring and come back. Like that's not even happy hour, man. Can and you they're going to reel you back to the dirty ass cruise ship and like <laughs> serve you some old ass shrimp cocktail. I don't know. Like I just it's it's. I try to keep an open mind about it, but anyways, I like I I, I went I, I did some research. Seven fifty is the add on. Okay, I because I just went to go book it, and immediately thousands of dollars were on my yes. screen. So so you, so you book your you book your cabin, and it looked like the price range for the cabin was anywhere from two to three thousand dollars. Yes, it, it takes off from uh, Barcelona, I think. It, is that was I think that's what it says. Sure. So, so you got to get to Barcelona too. So you're not. Yeah. I can't believe that she's going on this cruise. Well, I don't believe that she is. I think she's doing what the chain smokers did on the cruise that we went on, where they just choppered in, did their performance, played roses four times in a row and left. One million percent. And she, she will be at one of these destinations. Like I said, like maybe it's maybe it's Firenze. Maybe it's like, you know, one of these like gorgeous little places in the Mediterranean. She'll be there on her yacht or in her, you know. Oh, she'll her, do. I think she's going to do one panel discussion and head over to she, Clooney's place on Lake Como yeah, and call it gonna, a day. She's going to come on the boat. She's going to come on the boat for the here. Here's the for the conversation with Gwyneth Paltrow, where you can join Goop founder and CEO Gwyneth Paltrow as she interviews a top wellness expert. Plus, she will answer some of your questions. Some, some, <laughs> some. not all. Some they have give, to be pre-approved ahead of over, time. Give me an over/under on how many questions you think that she answers from a cruise ship. 
full of thousands of people. Four and a half, <laughs> like no more than four and a half. And like the, these, will, they're, they're going to have plants that work within the company. They're going to have like interns that they hired for the summer. They're going to put them on the cruise to make sure that they like, they're doing like grunt work that no one wants to do. And then they're going to pay those interns to stand up and ask just absolute soft, like just the softest questions you can come up with in order to, to just check that box for the, the celebrity cruise cruises.com. Yeah. I, I do. I, I agree with the first thing you said though. This feels like maybe I'm way out of line. Maybe this beyond ship from celebrity cruise, which is like brand new. Maybe it's just like super luxe and nice. And I'm missing out on a great opportunity. Just like when I missed out on fun summer camps, but, <laughs> but like, it does seem a little off brand, doesn't it? Yeah. For the, like, like for this, you know, you know, this, she, her, she's such about high end luxury and this fact that you can just like buy a little experience with her on a cruise seems yeah. A, against type. She at least did it in like Italy or something. If she just did like some random place in like the Caribbean, I, I think like she would be, we'd be just in absolutely calling her out being like, all right, this is a money grab and we can all see through it. But she was like, no, we have to go to Italy because all the goop people like only want to go to Italy. <laughs> There's always a point in the summer where like, I've, I mean, obviously Instagram is such a small following of people that you have and you only see people doing dope stuff because people only post when they're doing cool stuff. Naturally. There's always a point in the summer where I'm like, is everyone in Italy right now? What, like is every single person there that I know and it might be like two people have been there in the last four weeks but it just like i uh, we got to get over there goop also released this week their father's day gift guide mm. um in case you want to get a 420 dollar <laughs> uh cutting board um you can also buy like uni like they, they have a tray of uni that you can just go buy like i i'm not a big fan of buying like sea urchins online, online. to eat <laughs> that are covered in plastic but maybe you can do that i mean like they have a virtual chocolate tasting for eleven $1 hundred dollars. Do you taste the chocolate virtually? Yeah, like what, you all hop in a Zoom call and call it a day. They have forty-four dollar bourbon barrel aged maple syrup. Okay, that, I, it's a it's an interesting list. You know, I, I cook a lot. I, I, knives, cutting boards, it's all very cool. I don't think I could just flop down some wet raw chicken on a four hundred twenty dollar cutting board. No. You no. don't, do you think you could like, we got gifted a nice cutting board for our wedding and I have yet to use it because I'm afraid that I'm going to ruin it. And it's terrible. Like I use our shitty plastic one all the, all the time instead when I should just be using this really nice one that we were gifted, yeah. but I'm just so scared of marking it all up and just making it look terrible. Cause I've dreamed salmonella all over it. Exactly. <laughs> like, and I just have dreams of using it for like a cheese board one day, but instead I'm just like so gun shy on this thing. It's embarrassing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think, I think Goop's Father's Day suggestion list, their, their gift list is a pass for me. Um, yeah. I'm going to tell Sally to stay away from that for Father's Day this yes. year. Yeah. Cause it doesn't even have the, the, the Vijay J candle on there, which is probably, no. that should be number one, right? Yeah. I mean, I, uh, I've, I've been very public <laughs> about the fact that I did buy that candle for research purposes. I, 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 I regretfully bought it with my own money instead of the company money because I didn't feel comfortable using the company card for that. But yeah, we were the proud owners of that. And honestly, like it was fine. Yeah. Like it didn't, it was, it was a whatever candle. Didn't knock your socks off. No, I mean, our candles are better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the last thing that I was going to say about this goop cruise while we're just sitting up on here or while I am sitting up here on my, uh, high horse is it's it. The other thing about it that's weird to me is like, it going on that cruise and paying for and, and paying for the goop experience is like a piece of celebrity worship that 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 kind of doesn't track with how like like I'm guilty, you know, I'm following Dumois, I'm following just Jared. I'm like invested in the Kravis wedding this past weekend. Like I'm doing all the <laughs> the, the stuff, you know, I, I'm staring at the Us Weekly magazines covers when I'm at the grocery store, all that type of stuff. But then there's like this line that you cross where you like pay money to like be in the vicinity of a of a celebrity. Yeah. And that's where yeah. I, I have got a hard time with that. Like I feel like in I, I don't know if this is this feels sort of like an Austin thing, but I I feel like people here always have kind of prided themselves a little bit on like not like kind of ignoring celebrities when they are nearby. Like yeah. you, you and not and and basically abstaining from like fangirling or fangying over them and it's like I'm. I would love to meet a celebrity one day, but I want to like. I've got this pipe dream. Any, any celebrity of naturally, organically having it happen. 
Yeah, like rubbing elbows at a, a bar and being like, oh, sorry, man. Oh, what's up? Yeah, yeah. or oh, somebody hey. being like, yeah. Hey, uh, and so hey I just, Tom Holland, man. I'm right, sorry, what's right. up? Yeah, I brought my friend Tom here. Like, oh, hey, what's up? What's up, Tom? Oh, yeah. Yeah, cool. How's Zendaya? Cool. Yeah. Yeah, she good? <laughs> I just watched your new Spider-Man movie just earlier this week. You know, yeah. I rented it. Yeah, big ups. Yeah, nice. did you guys yeah. listen to that podcast we did about you guys walking down the street in London with that coffee cup? Like, it was pretty good. Pretty good segment, right? But, yeah, so it's just like the 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 idea that I would pay a whole bunch of extra money to, like, basically be a kind of a bullshit panel with Gwyneth Paltrow 200 feet away from me. Yeah, but it's you just, get goop curated menus. It, okay. <laughs> and some surprise gifts don't don't forget about the surprise gifts yeah i'm sure it's like I, I i guarantee it's the leftover stock they have a bunch of like face creams that they created in 2019 yeah, and then yeah. like it just Are didn't about work. To expire in yeah, six weeks. yeah like they already expired but they like <laughs> used white out on the back of the, the thing in order to say that it doesn't work anymore yeah it's not actually expired we just we're required to put that on there like, yeah okay gwyneth okay you know i i as for as much as i do you know shit on goop and make fun of them I am glad they exist because they are a constant source of content for me. And I will always be thankful for that. Like there, there was a po- like, there's a point in my life where I was like, you know what, maybe I just need to like pitch Sunday scaries to goop and have them take it in. And they just need to understand what I'm doing. But now I'm like, no, I, I just want to go full heel and like hope that they just hate me. I goop, goop every once in a while exhibits a little bit of self-awareness, which yeah. I think is why they one, I think it's a, one of the reasons why they're successful is because they, they, while it is like obnoxious to an extent, they do kind of reel it in and kind of like wink at the camera a little bit. That's every what they once do with the candle. While. Like they knew they were just selling yeah. a regular candle. They yeah. just knew that if they said that it smelled like Gwyneth Paltrow's vagina, that people would like clamor for it because it was something that was you know clickable. Yeah, I so, get it. But uh, but but yes, they are a, a fabulous source of content for sure. <laughs> Maybe if they maybe if they listen to this, we can get some free tickets to the Goop Cruise. Will you go on that with me, Barrett? If we get uh, if we get the nod, all expenses paid, including my flight to Barcelona. Yeah, yeah, I'll do I'll do the Goop Cruise. All right, we <laughs> put it on the bulletin board, Goop. You can get Barrett and I with those small caveats. Before we get into our next segment, let's hear from our friends over at L'Oreal. If you haven't heard about L'Oreal Paris Men Expert One Twist Hair Color, I got to tell you about it because we've got a friend in, within the company who's been absolutely killing it with this stuff. Uh, this is It offers natural, undetectable gray coverage. It's made for men and it only takes five minutes. The product is all in one bottle, which has never been done before with hair color. There's no mixing or multiple formula tubes, and it's available online at Amazon and Walmart or in stores at Walmart near the razor section. Uh, Dylan has been using this for I guess the last three weeks and he when he put it in his hair three weeks ago it was almost indistinguishable and it wasn't almost indistinguishable it was indistinguishable from his actual hair color and now that we are three weeks in and you look at Dylan you can see that some of his hair has grown out a little bit but he still looks like he has so much of his like original hair color left that it's you wouldn't even have any idea that he used this stuff you're saying that Dylan got hotter yeah, he got a, he got younger at the very least. He does. I, Dylan's always been a good looking guy, and you know his grades have always worked for him. So I'm not I'm not in a position to like say anything about that. But he looks younger with that with the little color in his hair, and the process he's described the process to us. It is so easy. You don't have to mix a bunch of stuff. It's just one tube. Um, they have a six week week coverage. Just go get this stuff. It's a one twist mechanism, which means that there's no mixing of multiple tubes. The bottle is simply twisted, shaken and cracked like a beer can and then applied with the brush nozzle. And after five minutes in a quick shower, all your grays are covered. Like I said, six weeks of coverage. It's just go get it. Go try it out for yourself. If you want to go check it out, you can get it where I previously stated on Amazon and Walmart, or we have a link directly to it in the description of this episode. So head there and go find out. Okay, Barrett, I'm really frustrated. You had a frustration this morning trying to get your Crocs. Yeah, yeah. I got off a plane the other day. I didn't I didn't know that anybody was dropping anything. I didn't know that we had like an imminent drop happening on ALD. And as you know, I, I just talked about how we need to go to Italy this summer. I'm going yeah. this fall, but I would also be willing still to go on the cruise with you this summer if that should pan out. Should um, Goop drop in the DMs, but just hit us with business class tickets over to Barcelona. B class or nothing. Yeah. Uh, the... <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely killing me because I've been trying to find shorts 
for how long? Like, I mean, this entire spring, I've been looking for a pair of shorts that work for me. Yes, you and mentioned your your shorts desert last. It's last terrible. Week. It's terrible for for guys like me with like I got dad legs. I got I just got issues going on. I have a fluctuating waistline. I I need that e waist, but I also need something that with a little bit of drip. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I've just found myself in a terrible position. And when I got off the plane. I was, it was about 1230 in the afternoon and on a Thursday. And I thought to myself, like, what's going on here? And I'd seen that ALD had just done a uniform drop that had a, a bunch of linen stuff that was actually for them, not terribly priced. It absolutely killed me that I missed it all, despite the fact that I had the early access email, which makes me feel like maybe I should, you know, have access to the early access. But within two hours, everything was sold out. Yeah. Now... I uh, went online earlier today and I saw that Chanel is now planning on opening private stores for their top clients, which means that, I mean, it says the French luxury giant said in 2021, revenue rose 23% over pre-pandemic levels to 15 billion. The brand now plans to open dedicated boutiques for top spending clients as rapid growth risks overcrowding its stores. Is that really the issue? Oh, our stores are so crowded. <laughs> oh, there's too much foot traffic. There's just there's just too many people inside of these Chanel yeah. stores, Will. Like, oh no. That's that's you we don't want that. You want to walk by a Chanel store and you want it to be just bare, you know? <sighs> just nobody in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I mean, like, no no <laughs> store has ever complained about too many people. Like, oh, the line is too long in our store. I, I did, you know, this this does feel relevant to the to the new Hermes store that opened on South Congress because like apparently the first weekend there was just, you know, a giant line. Oh, and is it I'm, open now? I'm quite positive that that was a manufactured line because I I strolled by casually um, just the other day and like they've got the little rope outside there and there was nobody in line and uh, Hermes would be happy to know that there was also nobody inside of the store. So... <laughs> maybe this, maybe it's a store only for top clients. It might, maybe it is. Yeah. I was yeah. like, and so you told me about Louis Vuitton earlier and what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, the Louis Vuitton thing, they are, they're finally gearing up to release the Virgil Abloh, um, created off white, uh, sorry, not off white Nike Louis Vuitton air force ones, you know, the, 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 the first editions of which were like selling through Sotheby's, uh, auction house for $330,000 or whatever. But like now pairs are coming to Louis Vuitton stores. And they are being exclusively offered with early access to clientele. And what I read was that the threshold to be offered a pair at retail, which is $2,000 a pair, you needed a million dollars of lifetime spend with Louis Vuitton. Now, call me crazy. Call me crazy here. You know, I, I like if you're a top customer somewhere, <laughs> you should get a little kickback. Are you really making the people that have spent a million dollars in their life at Louis Vuitton? Are you really making them pay for these sneakers? Just send them a damn pair of the sneakers. Yeah. Yeah. That's that. That's a fair point. I mean, that, <laughs> like, you know, I guess here's the thing, though, like in, in this type of in the influence influencer economy. Right. While they obviously need to nurture the relationships with these clients. These are also not the clients that are selling their product online. They're not pushing the product. They are not advertising the product. They are not showing off the product more than when they like, you know, board their own private planes or whatever. Right. Yeah. So it's like, no, those aren't the people that you want to give. Free and in order to spend a million dollars at this point, like no offense to like old people out there, but you're old. Like you're, you're, you're you're, old. It's hard right. to spend a million dollars on anything. So like, that's yeah. Like, no, you're going to send the free pair to like Quavo and to Haley Bieber. You're yeah. not sending the free pair to, you know, Mrs. Bezos. <laughs> Like, right. Like, like, and, and, and I don't know if that million dollar w threshold is, was even accurate. This was like speculation or some, you know, it dripped through the grapevine, but it's, but, but the point is you need to have spent a shitload of money already at Louis Vuitton to even be able to get the sneakers. And I think that's the, that, that, that's the, that's the big picture here, right? Is like, you know, you, you mentioned ALD, the, 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 there's, we have, you and I have early access, but as I've told you before, there's now early, early access. Uh, There's an 8 a.m. early access, which we don't have access to because we haven't spent enough money yet. <laughs> How much money so, do you have to spend to get early, early access? Like, this is crazy. I feel so like they, it, I think the only reason I have early access is because I've returned so many pairs of pants to them. So it looks like my lifetime sales are through the roof, but my lifetime returns are about equal. You've just been spending the same like $300 of credit just yeah. over and over and over. Exactly. Like, yeah, um, I just keep on returning it and then spending the credit returning. I'm just paying the shipping costs up front and just losing that money. But I, you know, I, I think about it a lot with, with ALD and, and I know we talk about them damn near every week, but one of the like it, 
they 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 just they are hitting the right notes on so many different levels, whether it's the product itself or the styling or the marketing or the way that they are developing their own customers. And it's insane because what I think about so often now is that like they could have set what they're what they have basically set up is a is is like a subscription program. Yeah. Like I'm I basically feel like like Amelie Andor is a subscription thing that I pay for. Yeah. It's like when something drops, I better fucking buy something. Oh yeah, you can't wait. Like I I, I like a pair of the shorts that they dropped the other day so much that I might just go look to buy them on a resale site because I'm that desperate for shorts at this point. But like I don't want to spend that much on shorts, but like at this point I I want those fucking shorts. Yeah. And 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 now like I you we probably feel like this I know we feel this, the little voice in the back of our head. that's like, well, I got to get that early, early access. I know. And now I'm like, okay, I'm going to go buy like a, so I, I a guess four thousand dollar <laughs> Woolrich vest, I guess. Yeah, I guess like, I gotta, right. And so it's, it's really, really genius how like it didn't kind of insidious, insidiously infects you to the point where you're like, well, it, I, I got to be able to buy this stuff and to get there. I gotta buy some stuff. I, so it's just the 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 you know that and the Chanel opening stores exclusively for private clients, which is just insane. The 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 numbers on here for Chanel with the 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 uh, the rises and they tripled their profits twenty three percent over pre pandemic. Our revenues they they tripled their profits and revenues rose twenty three percent over pre pandemic levels to fifteen billion in sales. It's like man. They're, they're, people people are just out here spending money like what economy like what stock market crash like yeah. no we're good i'm just gonna buy this you know four thousand dollar bag i don't know what's going Call on that. yeah I'll i don't know if it's just like speaking to the wealth gap continuing well, to increase or what but it's 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 nuts well part of the reason i like and i bring up like we bring up ald too is i just feel like everything they do influences everyone else at this point especially in men's fashion and so it's like I'm scared that should some new brands start becoming as popular as they've become and maybe even start to replace them, that we're going to find ourselves in this model where you can't get anything that is like popular or trendy from these places because they're going to end up just selling it to the clients that spend the most money with them. And at this point, like it's impossible for me to even try to spend the most money or spend money with them. Cause if I even tried that, I'd have to go buy a bunch of stuff I don't want don't in order want, to right. just get on the early list so you yeah, can actually yeah. get the stuff you want. Yeah. And a lot a lot of new customers complain about that with with regularity, the, that conundrum that you just described, where it's like, well, I can't even spend to get there because there's not because there's nothing left. Yeah. And what little does remain, I don't is not the stuff that 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 you want. The the other, I mean, the interesting thing about what you said is like, the you know, ALD did do it organically by mm -hmm. making great products Correct. that they weren't making a ton of. People loved it. A little, a culture was built around it. And then they were able to essentially transfer it into this exclusive access model that they're running now. But th that, that begs the question, can you just create that from thin air? And I feel like... Um, Hidden, the Instagram account, hidden.ny. Yeah. You know, they're they're doing merch and product now, and they're they're I they're sort of trying to do that. Like you can pay for an early ac access subscription fee with them. I think it's like twelve dollars a month mm -hmm. and it gets you early and limited access to their merch drops. But it's like I don't I don't think it I don't think that's gonna pan out in this with the same type of longevity that ALD has because it's like you need you need everybody kind of to buy in so that you can reach that kind of critical mass to to really 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 move product. Yeah, I mean we I'm like I don't know what to do about them anymore cuz like I have the I have the New Balance green yellow 550s mm -hmm. and like now that El Prez is wearing them on like the <laughs> sidelines uh, at like like at the Celts games, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, "Oh man, like I got to get some new shoes. Yeah, like, I don't know yeah. if I, I can't be, I can't be wearing the same thing as like, as he is right now because like everyone makes fun of him. So like, I, I, not, I need to figure it out. So yeah, now I'm just well, wearing my Nike, my Nike, uh, Pegasus, Pegas Pegasi, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> whatever <true. laughs> they are. So just, just being an old man, dad sneaker, which I'm fine with. Well, maybe I can interest you in some $900, uh, Gucci gazelles. Well, I actually just paid. Uh, I actually just spent a million dollars over at Louis Vuitton, so oh, I'm so planning get, on getting get, a little get, early access to the Air, uh, Air Force One. Smart, yeah, yeah. smart. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, wh where do you think they're going to put these private Chanel stores? 
Uh, New York, London, Aspen, Jackson Hole, Paris. like just like, yeah. yeah, anywhere that rich people go and anywhere that rich people just hang out. Do you think that they will be, do you think they will have like branded facades? Like, so all of us peasants can like look, look upon it. Or do you think it will be more like backdoor, like kind of hidden? No, backdoor. No, backdoor. No, no branding up top, like more like, you know, it, more I feel private like club style. It'll be like a, it'll be like a, you know, black marble building that has like no actual branding on it except like the, the doorknob is like the little lv logo that you like have to pull yeah, on that that, so that actually sounds pretty tight yeah i mean yeah I, i'd stand outside just to look in the door and see what's All going right. on well there. okay yeah i think here the order of things is like first we get early early access to mm -hmm. ald then we spend a million dollars at louis vuitton then we get to access the black marble you know hidden secret Chanel stores. Maybe, honestly, maybe maybe someone. I mean, and we go on the Goop cruise. Yeah, and then we go on the Goop cruise. Maybe <laughs> maybe the ALD. Maybe like Teddy Santis is listening, and he's he heard the Ame Leon dollars, and he's like, his wheels are turning now, and he's like, yeah. oh man, this is the next wave. Yeah, yeah, they're doing something over there. Well, another thing that's we already talked about Goop, and I guess we've already talked about ALD. So let's talk about Ladcore. Let's just <laughs> let's just knock out the holy trinity of uh, what we're doing right now. Um, <laughs> We talked about it a few weeks ago, but everyone's trying to recreate these soccer jerseys and make them look authentic. And honestly, there's been some good ones that have come out, but none of which I'm like in love with. Balenciaga and Adidas just revealed that they have a collection coming out. This essentially looks like a Manchester United jersey, which they're just appropriating Ladcore culture right Pe now. People in the comments here, I'm on uh, a post that you shared with me at, that's uh, at Soccer Bible. The lads in the comments or seem to be suggesting that it's like a mixture of Liverpool and Man United. Yeah, yeah. The the lack of any other designs besides like the badge and the sponsor and then just the very subtle designs, it it it's giving it's giving Liverpool Manchester it's giving United. Liverpool, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did I, think, I use that right? Yeah, I think so. Yes. Um yeah, you know, we we talked about when we the the first week that we covered the bloke core thing, we kind of asked the question, right? We pitched like do you need vintage jerseys or can some of these brands that are trying to kind of like do the jerseys in a fresh new way, can those catch on and be a part of it as well? And since we had that conversation, I've, it, they've just been, you know, it's the, it's the mind trick. You talk about it and then you just start seeing it everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so it's ALD, it's palace. It's, it's, uh, you know, I've just seen it for it's Balenciaga. Now I've seen it all over the place. Um, who maybe like awake New York, maybe had one too. Point being that there are lots of options. Plus, we've got things like the Gucci Gazelles that we just mentioned again. But the 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 soccer thing is truly taking over in a way that I really don't think that it has ever before. And I also I I just have this feeling. Do you and do you feel it as a longer term soccer fan? Do you think that soccer in general is catching on here in a way that it hasn't before? Short answer: Yes. Like my group text is watching Premier League, yeah. and Champions League on Saturday and Sunday mornings. The now. short answer you is know what yes, I mean? but I will also say that I had this exact same feeling four years ago during a World Cup year. And it's it like is a World Cup year, exactly. Yeah. And so, like la when when it was a World Cup year four years ago, the amount of soccer street style that was coming out, okay, it, it increased so much. I actually talked about it briefly with your Oysters, Clams, and Cockles co-host Ross Bolin on the Ross Bolin podcast. And I said, I was like, it's going, this year is going to be the year of a bunch of just, you know, that, that street soccer kind of style. And I'm seeing the same thing this year too. I mean, they're even releasing like, I mean, they always release vintage jerseys and stuff like that, but there's just such an uptick in it. And I think it has to do with, you know, it's been a crazy EPL season. It's mm -hmm. been a, you know, there's so much talk about the world cup happening. There's just a lot going on. And I feel like it's gotten to the point where, I mean, it's always soccer will always be America's fifth, fifth sport. If it's even the fifth sport, like, I don't even know, but like, I feel like everyone is starting to watch it a little bit more. I yeah, feel like people yeah. are more interested. I feel like I, like people get a little more excited. Uh, part, part of the issue was that our local and, and national TV networks hadn't bought into it yet, mm -hmm. but now like I, they, they've figured out, I think they were like, uh, well, one with all the streaming stuff, like, live tv is for sports now like that's that is why you have yeah fubo or cable or youtube tv or whatever else so that you can watch live sports yeah and so i think they realize like hey this season and the days and the times actually work really well for tv schedules because there's no other sports on 
why are we not making this more of a thing and cashing in on the ad dollars? And so now it's like, now it's great to be able to wake up on Saturdays and Sundays when there is no NFL, when there is like NBA games are all in the evening, baseball's in the, you know, in the dead of it. You don't really care yet. And it's like, hell yeah, I want to watch fucking Man City come back from 2-0 down yeah, and win exactly. the Premier League. Like, like it's, it's, so it's all just kind of, it's got the backing of the networks and it feels like the fans are catching on. It's a World Cup year. The style is 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 falling into place like we're seeing right now, and so I, I it does feel like maybe there's a little alchemy going on where where it, it could actually, you know, maybe it can happen. Maybe it can become the fifth sport because I don't really feel like it is. It has been previously. It's, it's not. But I've had more people ask me, "Hey, I'm starting to watch. What team do I need to support?" Like, "Hey, I'm doing this." And, yeah. And for me, I think the part of the beauty of the sport in, in general is just there's a totally different culture around it that is so much fun to follow, and you just have to dive in in order to follow that appropriately and like understand what's going on. And part of that uh, that culture is uh, just simply following Liam Gallagher on Twitter. <laughs> uh, at this point, he's become if you're a soccer person, he's obviously a massive, massive Manchester City fan. So it's kind of painful for me to follow him as. I looked up to him way too much in high school for his work at Oasis, in Oasis, but he's outrageous on Twitter. All he talks about is he just calls people really inappropriate names, talks shit, and then just says really generic stuff in a really Liam Gallagher way. It's just kind of great, it's, especially as someone. I mean, it's great for me who hates listening to Manchester City people talk. So, <laughs> I mean, and and he was you you brought this to my timeline. He was recently headbutted by. Uh, center back Ruben Diaz's dad at at the Man City game where they they came back and won the Premier League. I would lo- if, if I had like a Make a Wish Foundation <laughs> wish. I think I would headbutt. I would head. Oh, it was Noel Gallagher who got headbutted. Oh, sorry, not it Liam. Was, it was Noel. Yes. Okay. Yes. But we're but but I we're gonna talk about both of them here because <laughs> I I feel like part of you know going into bloke course summer is you gotta you gotta you gotta be about that hooligan life too mm-hmm. and. Mm-hmm. I don't think anybody exemplifies it better than the Oasis brothers, Liam and no, Noel Gallagher. No. Who you just, if you, if, you know, if you're like, if you're the age that Will and I are, then you, then you know a little bit about it, but we were still even young when a lot of this was going on. And if you're younger than us, so if you're in your twenties, you just need to do your Oasis research and just Google Oasis like craziest stories because they've always been connected to soccer. They've always been crazy La, you know, lads, bruvs, soccer hooligans, etc. Um, and so the this is just like the latest in a string of events. Is mm-hmm. Noel Gallagher? They're wild, being shit faced at the Man City game and getting head butted by by Ruben Diaz's dad. Uh, but I just like, how about this? Former Manchester United defender Gary Neville made a slight error in judgment when he sent his guitar to Oasis songwriter and ardent Man City fan Noel Gallagher. The guitar, which Neville claims he was inspired to learn because of Gallagher was returned to him inscribed with the heartfelt message along with the initials for Man City Football Club scribbled all over. Here is the note. Dear Gary, how many caps have you got for England? How many do you think you deserve? I'll tell you, fucking none. Lots of love, Noel Gallagher. Uh, th- you love to see it. Liam was was a, was a parking attendant for, uh, let's see. Gallagher, uh, Liam Gallagher worked as a parking valet for Man United, but he's a Man City fan. Mm-hmm. So as an opportunist, he proved his love for City uh, by taking wire wool to Paul Ince's BMW, tipping a bu- bucket of water on Ryan Giggs's head, and removing Eric Cant- uh, Cantona's car door. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, like, this yeah. is, th- yeah, this is what, this is what the lads would call shithousery. <laughs> <laughs> I... Uh... I I hate that they're Man City fans, but I also love the fact that like they are they're such characters that you can't get mad about it. I mean, you read their quotes from when he got headbutted. He said, "As the third goal goes in, it was a, there was absolute bedlam in a stadium where uh, where we sit. Ruben Diaz's family are in the box, a couple boxes up. So I'm jumping around like an idiot, passing my 11 year old son around like the Premier League trophy. <laughs> Everyone's lifting him up, and I turn around, and Ruben Diaz's dad runs straight into me, headbutts me, and I'm on the floor covered in blood. Like that sounds like an absolute scene that I want to be a part of. Yeah, I know yeah. my team finished sixth, so I'm not going to win any leagues anytime soon, and probably not going to be bleeding on the floor around like." Like rock stars and you know yeah. center backs dads but it sounds great <laughs> i would love to do that at some point said he's a big bear of a man he almost knocked my teeth out uh just like thinking about the clothing and the culture and all that like one of the, the it, it also i think it helps answer one of the questions that i've always had about like why it feels like 
stuff like golf, tennis, ski have always been kind of like always a part of fashion and constantly referenced and like brands can be stylish and and kind of play off of those sports and the clothes they're in. And I've always wondered as like soccer, the world sport, right? Like why it hasn't. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is like look at the comments on Soccer Bible about the, this Balenciaga Adidas stuff. Yeah. And it's like, the culture does not vibe with an $800 soccer jersey. Yeah. You know what I mean? They don't want that. Like the only thing that they're willing to spend $800 on is a stony jacket. Yeah. yeah, Like, but not a fake jersey for a team that doesn't exist. to their, yeah, to their, you know, it makes no sense for their home, home, uh, home side. So yeah, that, that, that's, I feel reading about Liam and Noel and all their escapades and, and even their current ones. And then just kind of like diving into the comments about this Balenciaga Adidas stuff kind of helps you paint that picture of like, this is a really authentic culture. And when fashion comes after authentic cultures like that and wants to reference it, reference it and play off of it, th- there's a lot of gatekeeping. There's a lot of like, no, yeah. don't fuck with this. This isn't, this isn't what it's about. Like yeah. you're, you're commercializing it and capitalizing on it in a way that we don't like. And we, so that's, I think that's kind of the, the answer or part of the answer to that, to that question. We, I saw it when Streetwear Night Live, who it's a Substack and Twitter feed and Instagram feed that we've, I think mentioned on the podcast before, they recently had a tweet that said something to the effect of like, the, everyone's going to be wearing these vintage soccer things this summer. And it did, it was a tweet that did numbers. And a lot of the quote tweets were just like, no, people have been doing this forever. Like, <laughs> like, no, this is not some new fad. Like people yeah. are just wearing vintage jerseys. No, that's just that's the culture of what you do. Yeah. But now that like, I, I mean, again, like, I mean, it's like, it's like how everyone's, you know, political awareness is heightened during an election year. Like, yeah. I think it's just one of those things that everyone's pretty like horny for soccer right now. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah. So, uh, Barrett, ever since I had my son going to the grocery store has been an absolute chore. I don't want to bring him to the grocery store for fear that he's just gonna be crying the entire time. I don't have time to get away and I'm too tired most of the time to actually go do that kind of stuff. So when I'm looking for a late night snack after he's gone down, it's kind of difficult to find. Because you know, finding all your grocery items in one place at an affordable price is almost impossible now. But now with Thrive Market, I get everything I need and so much more. I have to admit that Sally was a massive user of Thrive Market before they came onto the podcast. But I have to say, we've been using it ever since either way. With Thrive Market, you can shop everything from healthy pantry essentials and sustainable meat and seafood to non-toxic cleaning and beauty products, all delivered right to your door. And if you find a lower price elsewhere, Thrive Market will match it. Thrive Market carefully vets each and every item so you can trust it if, uh, or trust that if they sell out, it's probably the highest quality available. And finding everything you need is easy on Thrive Market because you can filter by 90 plus values and lifestyles to find what works for you. Your keto, your gluten-free, zero waste, you want plant-based, you want, you know, anything you want, you can go get on there. It's truly an amazing site. Barrett, what, what products have you been eyeing from them lately? I, I mean, the, the thing about Thrive Market is they have, like, they already have a bunch of products that I e- either love and use already, or they have similar comps. And it's 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 good, high quality stuff, like you already mentioned. They've got their own brand of some stuff, like their Thrive Market creamy peanut butter. Mm-hmm. I always, when I, I'm, I'm a huge peanut butter guy, I, I eat peanut butter, whether it's in a smoothie or something else, like every single day. I don't want all those additives in peanut butter. I just want the peanuts and yeah, salt one. Exactly. Those ones at the grocery store are like three fifty, four bucks minimum. It goes up quick. Thrive too. Market's peanut butter two seventy nine for <sighs> for for that style of peanut butter. Um, how about Annie's mac and cheese? Ever heard of it? Uh, Barrett, you have no idea how much. <laughs> now that I said something about my son earlier. He loves Annie's instant mac and cheese, and we make it all the time for him. Another thing that we keep stocked in our pantry all the time from Thrive Market is there. I think it's I, I'm going to call it a beef stick, but it's actually turkey, and I I absolutely love them. They're in Sally's lunch every day, and I pretty much grab one from the cupboard. You know. Every other day. Be, I mean, beyond snacks too, they carry Ursa Major, um, which is a like a like a grooming, they, they do grooming products that I love. They've got the Hop and Fresh deodorant. Uh, I got excited um, when um, I saw they carried Ursa Major. That yeah, was a among brand others. I used to use all the time. Uh, Dr. Bronner's, if mm-hmm. you've never, you just, you they've got, they carry Dr. Bronner's South Suds. You need a big bottle of the South Suds below your sink at all times. Mm-hmm. All mm-hmm. the stuff that you're like, I don't know how to clean that South Suds, boom, done. Uh, hum Supplements. We're bit, we, we, we use home supplements all the time in our household. So it's, it's, so I, I could pick way more than three, Will. Yeah. And I'm going to. They're stacked. They're fast and free carbon neutral shipping. So you're just bettering the planet. Can a grocery store do that? I think not. Join Thrive Market today to get 40% off your first order and a free gift worth over $50. 
That's T-H-R-I-V-E market.com slash scaries to get 40% off your first order and a free gift worth over $50. That's thrivemarket.com slash scaries. Again, thrivemarket.com slash scaries. It's time for some wish list updates or imminent cops, either one. Do you have uh, one for yeah, us today, I do, Barrett? Yeah, I do. And, and mine, pro- this, this probably, this is a new one. It just got added to my wish list today. So it is, it's, it, it's, suited, it's suitable for both categories. It probably is an imminent cop, um, but it's also just currently residing on the wish list. Uh, he, so there's a website called uh, Food52 mm-hmm. that does recipes and food and housewares and all that type of stuff. And th- th- these came across my my radar today. They're called working glasses. Okay. Oh yeah. N- which was not something that uh, that I've ever heard of. Uh, get out of here, pop up. How do I get this to go away? Um, <laughs> but they're they're basically they are they they're like really thick glass, you know, multi ten sided. They're just like hefty drinking glasses. But what I what I like about them, the reason that I think they're cool, is because they come with lids. Mm-hmm. And so they're actually great for as kind of like, kind of like little, um, you know, to go containers as well. Right. So like if, if you're packing like cereal or yogurt in the morning to, to roll with, with you in the car, or if you make a smoothie, or if you need a lid on top of, you know, you, you, you pour yourself some cold brew and and you're running out the, out out the door, but you don't have a cap on it. Right. Like these lids are perfect. These glasses aren't going to break. Super durable, super easy to clean, and they just look very like you know French bistro-y, and uh, I, I I just dig them. Something I like doing is I like eating cookie dough. Someone makes homemade cookies, and I'm in the vicinity. I'm I'm taking some swipes of that cookie dough. My cousin Dana, she used to keep some of these around her place all the time, and she would make the cookies, and then she'd take a little tiny ball of cookie dough, and she would put it in there for future use in case you wanted just that kind of cookie dough, mm-hmm. you know, little jolt of energy. And seeing a, a a glass like this with that top on it just takes me right back to wanting to, I used to just, when I was a little kid, I'd just sneak into her fridge, grab that thing, and eat a bunch of the cookie dough. <laughs> I would do it when she wouldn't even tell me it was in there. I'd just be like, I know she's got some in there, and I'm going to go steal some right now. It just, it makes me want some so bad right now. Uh, really reasonable. I think it's like, I think you get like nine or 10 glasses for 40 bucks too. It says 18 so piece set, so probably nine plus nine maybe lids. Maybe nine, maybe nine glasses, nine lids. That would make sense to me. So yeah, yeah, this is, uh, this is an imminent cop. <sighs> You're making me want it. Randy, I think Randy likes imminent cop. It's always time to, it's always a good time to upgrade your glassware. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I, th- we absolutely need some new glassware right now and I need to figure it out. I've still been, I've still been trying to find those, uh, those red wine glasses wine that glasses. I wanted. Yeah. Someone yeah. sent me a, someone very graciously sent me a link where they were selling them for way too cheap at a vineyard in California. Ah. And I went to go check out with them. And the reason they were selling them so cheap is because the shipping on them was about $30 per glass. And I was like, yeah, that's not going to work for me. I don't do that. I, I don't like paying for shipping. I thought you were going to say that when you got there, they were all sold out because they had done early, early access. They probably the, did. For yeah. The, the, the inexpensive. For their uh, wine members who have wine, spent $1 yeah. million dollars at the One vineyard. <laughs> the vineyard, yeah. <laughs> My wish list item is something that I, uh, again, missed out on this week. Um, as you guys know, I'm a Manchester United supporter. Adidas recently released a Manchester United 90 home jersey, a throwback to their 1990 home jersey, essentially. And it has the 1990 sponsor on it, Sharp. Are they even still around? They got to be around still, right? Maybe, yeah. Um, it's got the the vintage logo. It's got some kind of like this cap sleeve, which I'm not in love with. But as far as vintage looking pieces go, this is about as authentic as you can get. And seeing this made me realize like, okay, if I'm going to go full Ladcore, I need this jersey. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. This is a perfect thing for it unless I go straight up vintage. But this is such a cool throwback that I feel like I just need to have it in my repertoire, not even just to wear, but just to have later in life when I'm like looking back at my jersey collection that I've I've somehow botched at this point and I only have like a shred of. And would you say the, the retail on this was 90 bucks? That's yeah. cheaper than you can go and buy Correct. one of these vintage now for, right? Correct. Like if yeah. you go back and find the, the United 90 home jersey in its original form, it probably going to cost you more than 90 bucks. There are sites out there where you can find vintage jerseys for less money. Yeah. I mean, you can go on eBay and find used ones sure. or whatever. You can go on classicfootballshirts.com and you, .co.uk, I'm sorry. And you can find things that are not as expensive. The issue is that, you know, for those sought after jerseys, the ones that have like those monumental moments, those iconic photos taken of people doing things like 
it just becomes harder and harder to find those jerseys and the price goes up and up and up and up. Right. I right. wanted when Wayne Rooney retired, I was like, I need to go get a vintage Wayne Rooney jersey. And then I realized they were selling all for $200 and I decided against it. I already yeah. have a Wayne Rooney jersey. I don't, probably don't need another one. I don't even wear the one that I have. And so this was one that I thought, you know what, this is actually the most well done one that I've seen this year because it's probably actually for Manchester United. That being said, it's selling out. It's not the worst thing in the world because I don't want to support the club financially currently, <laughs> even though I probably should. Um, it's it's sold out, but I know that it's going to be you're gonna, people are going to be able to find it sooner than later. I wouldn't be surprised if they did a restock on it just based on what yeah. I've seen. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just killing me that I, I I don't know. I've missed. I'm just I'm I don't know what's wrong with me right now. I'm just begging to spend money. Like I just really want to go buy shit right now for the hot weather. I think that's the issue. I feel like panicked that I don't have enough hot weather clothes right now. Yeah. And yeah, so and just, you're, I mean, you're you're rage copping after missing all those linen shorts. <laughs> <laughs> what would you rather do? Like, we, I, I, I'm I'm like torn between liking rage copping more or imminent cops. Or imminent cops. Yeah, I like both of them. <laughs> I think I like the rage cop more. Well, I mean, imminent cops is kind of like I feel like that's something that we've coined here. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm I'm happy to rage cop. I feel like is something that you'll see. Yeah, yeah. Mentioned we, out there on the. On the web. We need to lean more into imminent, I guess. Yeah. Works yeah. for me. So, so yeah. So. All right. Well, Barrett, I mean, let's, I might get a spray tan before we go on this goop cruise. I, we, I think that that's an absolute must. If you're not, if, it's spray tan summer, it's lace, lace shirt summer, summer bloke core. Uh, and if, if you're not getting spray tanned up with a nice custom golden glow before you hit in the goop cruise, Gwyneth is going to laugh at you, man. I tried to, I, I, I didn't say this during the L'Oreal read because I was afraid that they're going to get mad at me for it. But I was going to say, like, it's essentially just a spray tan for your hair. <laughs> like, I mean, you're just making yourself hotter by making your hair like a little darker. You know, uh, this past Saturday was Pete Davidson's last ever appearance on SNL. I, I think he's continued to get the spray tans, Will, because he got that spray tan, looked in the mirror. He liked what he saw. He was like, I, I got to keep this up. Dude, I need I, I one. Can't, I can't go back to being a pasty boy. I need a spray tan. Yeah. I, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna get, I'm just going to get an absurd one before going to the dead concert <laughs> in LA. I can't show up to Southern California looking pale coming from Austin. That's going to be a bad I feel like there's look. a lot of pale deadheads though. Yeah, probably. I mean, a lot of people sitting in their basements like, or I mean, all, all I did during the pandemic was just listen to all their live stuff and that's how I got into it. So yeah. I guess that's what I'm going to do. But, uh, but not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. If you do, you'll be, you know. I'm making you come with me when I do it. I can't go in alone. I need someone. I need some moral support there. And Sally's going to think I'm too annoying. So she's not going to want to come with me. All right. Well, uh, like we said, we're doing listener questions next episode. We haven't done that yet. And I, we get a ton of them. And I almost feel bad that we haven't included some of them yet. And so keep an eye out for that. There will be an avenue for you to send them in. I just don't know what the best way for that to be is. But we'll figure it out. But either way, I guess we'll see you guys in two weeks. Later. <laughs>